Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire. In today's video, I wanted to show you how to create the look of colored embossing, even if you don't have a bunch of embossing colors. And I also have some tips for using a misty stamping tool and getting more out of background dyes. So I've got a lot to share with you. You can see the cards that I created here and I have a bonus card at the end of this video. But let's go ahead and get started with the cross stitch flower cards that you see here. So I went ahead and die cut some panels from this Waffle Flower Lacy Layers die. It creates these little details along the scallop border edge. Thought that'd be fun for these cards. I went ahead and die cut a bunch out of Nina White 110 pound cardstock, but you could use any white cardstock. I'm also using the Waffle Flower Stitched Roses stamp set. This is a fantastic layering stamp set. I like how they have uh, it coded to tell you which images go together to layer into a flower and which inks you should use with each of the images. There are also some leaves in here. I'm just going to do the large flower with a few leaves. Now I will admit, this is one of those stamp sets that you really want to get lined up perfectly, but if you do, you get great results. So I'll share a tip with you how to make sure you can line them up just right. So I'm starting out by putting down that largest image, the first layer that'll be stamped in a light ink. I did some practice stamping on that sc scrap that you see there on the right. And I'm just making sure it centers okay on the bottom of this white panel die cut. Now I'm doing this in my Misty because this will be extremely helpful with lining up these images. You could do this with an acrylic block, but it's a little bit trickier. You would just wanna make sure you look through the stamp and make sure you line it up each time but really the Misty stamping tool is very helpful for this. Again, I'm stamping the first layer with the lightest color ink. And I actually did several cards today and I did a few different color combinations. So you'll see me switching to other color inks throughout this. I will link below and list which colors I used together. So if you wanna get the same results, you can. But basically I used a light, medium, and dark color ink for each of the flowers. Okay, so I went ahead and did the first layer of all the different color combinations, and now I wanted to show you a fun trick. Before I move on to the next layer, I want to give all of the ink that I just stamped the look of heat embossing, but I don't have a bunch of colors of embossing powder. So what I'm going to do is go back and stamp on top of everything we just stamped with Versamark ink and add clear embossing powder. So I'm putting the panels back into the Misty stamping tool using an anti-static powder tool. And then I'm going to ink up that same image that's in the same spot and stamp it right on top of the colored ink. So basically we're stamping a clear sticky ink on top of the colored ink and then adding clear embossing powder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do that with each of the panels. And then once I have all of the panels with the embossing powder on it, I will heat set them all at once. It's easier to do all the heat setting at once. It's actually faster because the gun will get nice and hot. So the colored ink that I used was a dye ink. Dye ink normally isn't used for heat embossing. That's why I stamped on top of it with Versamark, which is an embossable ink, and added the embossing powder. So it's just a trick to do this. If you have colored pigment inks, you could just go ahead and stamp it and add the powder to that and heat set it. Or if you have colored embossing powders, you could use those. But most people have dye inks, so I wanted to show you this trick. And this will give a really realistic raised look to these little cross stitches in the stamp pattern. Okay, so now I have already done my first layer and I heat embossed it. Next, it's time to add the second layer in. This will be with the medium color ink. Now, as I mentioned, since this one is so particular on lining it up just right, I wanted to share with you a trick. So I'm stamping that next layer in the stamp image onto a piece of inexpensive vellum. Doesn't matter what kind of vellum, just wanna stamp on there and I heat set it so I don't smear it. Now I'm going to use that vellum to help me line up the next image. So I'm going to take my panel, my stamped panel, put it into my Misty, right into the corner, and then I'm going to use the vellum to line it up over it. So you see how I'm lining up where this goes? It lines up very easily. You just gotta get in the exact right spot. So you just find where it goes on there and hold it in place. I'm going to use some magnets to hold it there. So I'm lining up the vellum image with the image that I can see through below it to make sure that's perfectly lined up. 
Okay, so once I have that held there, I'm gonna put my little magnets down, and now I can take that second layer that I stamped onto the vellum and line it up with the image that's on the vellum. So I'm kind of looking from the sides and looking from the top and looking through the stamp to make sure it's lined up with what I stamped on the vellum. This is such a great trick. I've done this in online card classes before, I believe. Some people stamp on acetate, but I find that that smears too easy. Some people use the label from their clear stamp, but I don't like taking all the stamps off to do that. Now what I'm doing here is I'm inking it up and stamping it onto the vellum and making sure that it stamps exactly on top of where I stamped before on the vellum, just to make sure it's set right, and it was set right, so now I can go ahead and stamp it onto all of my panels. And It is perfectly lined up. So if you've had trouble figuring out how to line up your layering images with your MISTI, give this a try. Just stamp it onto the vellum, heat set it, and then use that to help you line it up. You can then keep the stamped vellum pieces in with the stamp set so that whenever you use that stamp set, you'll have that layering guide to help you out. Okay, so after I went through and stamped that second layer in all the colors, I'm gonna go ahead and again, heat emboss it. So I left the stamp where it is on my MISTI, stamped it right on top of the color we just stamped, but I used Versamark ink so that it's nice and sticky so that I can add my clear embossing powder. And I did that for all of the examples. Now it's time for the third layer on this flower. So I stamped it again on vellum, and I'm just lining it up with the image that I stamped on my panel. So you can see how it lines up nicely. Put the, the magnet on it to hold it in place. Then you line up the stamp again with whatever you stamped on the vellum. Again, it's really good to look from the side to make sure it's lined up nicely. Once you have it just right, you can close the door on your MISTI and you're ready to stamp your third layer. Now this may seem like it takes a bit of time, but it's definitely worth it as opposed to just doing trial and error to get it set up just right. And since I'm making several cards at once, it's not too bad. I did keep track and it took me about 45 minutes to do the stamping on all 10, I think, of these cards. So that's really not bad considering how many I made. And if you have color pigment ink, that would save you a lot of time because you wouldn't have to do that clear embossing on top, or you could just skip the embossing altogether and keep your images flat. So this is the third and final layer. So this is my darkest color of ink. And again, I'll list all my ink combinations below. Now it's time to do the leaves. I can't believe how realistic this cross stitching looks. Now for the leaves, I did the same trick. I stamped the leaves onto the vellum. You can see the leaves here in the stamp set. And I'll use the vellum to line them up with my images. Now there are great keys again on this stamp set to help you figure out where these all go. So I hope this makes sense of using that vellum piece to help line things up. Uh, it may not work for you, it may work for you. Give it a try and see if it's helpful. There are lots of tricks out there. This is just another I wanted to share. So I went ahead and stamped my first set of leaves here. And then I remembered I can go ahead and set up the other leaf at the same time so that I can stamp them all at once. So I stamped the other leaf image on a piece of vellum again, heat set it, and now I'm lining it up perfectly. Then I'll take the stamp and line it up with the stamping on the vellum. And then I have both of my leaves set up to stamp at the same time. This will save me quite a bit of time. So I went ahead and I stamped all the leaves on all of the panels. I used the same color on all of them. It's a moss color from Hero Arts. Then I went ahead and stamped right on top with the Versamark ink and added the clear embossing powder. I like how the raised look of the embossing powder kind of lends to the cross stitch feel of the pattern. Okay, now it's time to add the sentiment. I decided to use the Neat and Tangled Crafting is My Jam sentiment. This is an older one but I thought the You're So Sweet sentiment went nicely with this cross stitch image. I'm gonna stamp this with VersaFine Black Ink. This is a pigment ink, so I can just go ahead and add the embossing powder to it and heat set them all at once. Again, I'm using clear embossing powder. So now everything is nice and raised and shiny on all of those stamped images. Okay, so now that I've done all my stamping, I wanted to keep the background simple, but add some texture. I love to hoard background dyes, so I thought I'd put a few of them to good use today and show you some creative things that you can do with them. This background die is from Little Anchor, and it cuts little slits into the cardstock, just for some fun texture. So I'm putting this into my die cut machine. I actually am going to switch it up and put my clean plate down first and have the die facing up. 
This is just gonna allow me to line my paper up with the front of that die. And I'm gonna run it through my die cut machine. Again, this doesn't really cut the paper into pieces. It just cuts little slits that are really fun. I thought that was really a unique looking textured background. But I wanted to show you something else you can do with that same die. With that same die, you can emboss it. You just need an embossing mat. It's inexpensive like the one that you see here. This one's from Spellbinders. And you use it in your die cut machine how you would use an embossing folder. So for me, I open up all the tabs on my Big Shot. I put down my cutting plate, then the embossing mat. Then I take my paper and die as I would if I were cutting it, put that face down onto that mat, and then put the cutting plate on top. Now when I run this through, it presses those cut lines into the cardstock instead of cutting through. So you get an impression instead. So see the different looks between them? I'll show you some more examples so you can see better. But that embossing pad is a great tool to have to get more out of your background dies or any dies. It allows you to make an impression. So here's another example. I used another die from Little Inker. This one cuts like a dotted scallop pattern, cuts out these little holes. First, I'm gonna show it to you just die cut. So I'm lining up the paper. This time, I'm gonna be real careful to keep it lined up as I lay it down onto my cutting plate. You can actually run dies either way through your die cut machine, either face up or face down. And after I've run it through, now I have all these tiny little holes cut out. I'm using my little spellbinder tool to get all those little holes out there, but you can see that this die cuts all those tiny holes. Such a fun background. Well, this time, I'm going to do the impression instead. So again, I've opened up the tabs on my Big Shot to have them all open, and I'm setting up my Big Shot as I would for an embossing folder. You can use any die cut machine for this. I have my Spellbinders embossing mat in there. I'm going to take my paper and put that between the mat and my die and run it through. And again, because that mat is in there, it will impress those die lines instead of cutting them. And check that pattern that you get out, it's gorgeous. This is a great way to extend the life of those expensive background dies that I love, love so, so much. They're just a great way to add texture to a background. So you can see the two differences there. Okay, so now let's start pulling these all together into cards, and I'll show you a few more backgrounds in a moment. So I'm just going to cut off the top of this panel. I'm gonna have this adhere to the top edge of my card. So I notice I have some little finger smudges. I get ink smudges all the time. I never worry about it. I just use this mono sand eraser. You first sand with the sanding edge, and it kind of takes that color off. Then you flip the eraser around to the smoother edge, and it kind of smooths the paper out. And nobody would ever see those little ink smudges that I get so often. So this is a great inexpensive tool to have. Okay, now to glue this together, I put some adhesive on the back of our stamped panel, and then I put a piece of white craft foam. This will give it a nice, even raised dimension and won't get crumbled going through the mail. So I'm just gluing that towards the top edge of the card, and I decided to not do any embellishments because I wanted to keep the focus on that cross-stitch rose. It's such a beautiful rose. Okay, now I wanted to show you the envelopes. I tried to do a decorated envelopes with each of my cards. So on here, I used this little cross stitch heart. This is another waffle flower stitched stamp set. And I just did the heart itself. There are a bunch of different teacup and coffee cup images in here that are cute, but I just used the heart to stamp on the flap of my envelope. Then I also stamped on the front the message that says handmade goodness inside. This is from a Gina K design stamp set that I've been meaning to use for a while. And there are a lot of fun things on it for stamping on envelopes. I'm a sucker for any stamp set that works great on envelopes. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a closer look at the different color combinations and background dies that I used. This is that little inker background die that I showed you before. And I used three different colors of Hero Arts ink. There's bubblegum, ultra pink, and raspberry jam to create the flower that you see there. Now for the peach cards, I used another little inker background die. And on both of them, I used the embossing mat to get an impression. So there you can see it impressed into the paper. Now on the card on the right, I glued the paper upside down so that the pattern that I have in the background is raised. So you can use either side and get that fun textured look. 
And by the way, the flower on the right, on the bottom right there, that one is not heat embossed. I wanted to show you the difference. The top one's heat embossed, the bottom's not. You can see the big difference and how like it pops so much more with that embossing powder on top. Now for these flowers, I use Lawn Fawn Peachy Keen and Hero Arts Pale Tomato and Hero Arts Strawberry Bold Inks. For the yellow cards, I use the Little Inker So Sunny background die. I tell you, I am a sucker for these background dies. So on one of them, on the left, I use the impression glued so that it's going downwards. On the one on the right, the impression goes upwards. Again, I use the embossing mat to create both of these and the texture is so much fun. A great way to do a fast background with lots of texture. The colors I used for this flower are Hero Art Soft Vanilla, Butter Bar, and Orange Soda. Now for the blue cards, I used a background die that was on my favorite Crafty Things 2016 list, and that is the Little Inker Diamond Lace background die. Now on the left, you can see what the die looks like when you cut with it. On the right, you can see what it looks like when you emboss with it with an embossing mat. So you can get completely different looks. Both are beautiful. And by the way, if you don't have background dies, you can do these impressions with any dies that you may have. Now for the colors on the blue flower, I used uh, Hero Arts Dusty Blue, Corn Flower, and Stone Wash for the three blue colors. And by the way, remember you can use any inks for this technique, any inks that you may have. Now here are those backgrounds that I created earlier with the Little Inker Dotted Scallops background die. On the left is if you cut it, on the right is if you just make an impression with an embossing mat. So there are a bunch of examples for you of using the faux colored embossing technique and also using background dies creatively. Before we go, I just wanted to show you one more quick example. This uses a waffle flower cross stitch cacti stamp set. Same techniques of layering, but this time I have a more playful card. And I actually only embossed the dark green, but not the light green. It's fun to emboss some and not emboss some of your stamping for a nice mix. The little cactus is stamped on a square die cut that I created using a cat scrappiness rope square die. And the background I stamped a My Favorite Things background stamp. And I put that on my envelope too. Now here's a little trick for the eyes that I wanted to share with you. I put down two white enamel dots and then I'm using a black Sharpie to draw the eyeballs on him. I didn't like the look of Google eyes on there. They didn't stand out enough. So this actually gave me a cleaner look. So I thought I'd share that with you. I also adhered a little die cut heart and then I put some shimmer and glossy accents on that so it would pop out nicely. And then I'm just drawing in a little smiley face with my Sharpie too. There are little stamps for creating the smiley face in the stamp set, but I decided to create my own. So there you have a bunch of examples of using faux colored heat embossing on your cards. If you are interested in all of the products that I use, they are linked below in my YouTube description. But remember, you probably have some stamps on hand that would work for these techniques. In the middle are more videos that might be of interest to you. And if you haven't done so, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for spending time with me and we'll see you again soon.